Sunday after Pentecost. Thank you for those of you joining us in person and those of you joining us online. It's good to have you with us. If you are online, you can download the, the bulletin, the order of service, and follow along that way. And of course, those of you present here can follow along on the screens. I invite you at this time to stand, remain seated, or kneel for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God, who is faithful and just, and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another for deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin of sin, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our life and our truth. Amen. With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Take up our cross and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. 
For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. May your word be my word. May the thoughts and meditation of our minds and hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. For you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Imagine conducting a survey. Imagine conducting a survey in your neighborhood, or maybe among your friends, uh, in the congregation. Maybe at a coffee shop, at gatherings you attend, and you ask each person, who do you say Jesus is? What kind of answers do you think you'd get? This isn't a rhetorical question. I'm actually like to know what you think you might get for answers. What are some answers that you might get if you ask somebody, who do you think Jesus is? Prophet. Prophet. The Messiah. The Messiah. God. God. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. A healer. Healer. A savior. What's that? A savior. A savior. How about someone that isn't churched? There's a few of those around, you know. Yeah. What might they say? What's that? I've heard of him. I've heard of him, okay. Some of them may say he was a teacher or a good person. Or they might say some of the things we've already said. We don't know. It's one of those things, you know, we were taught in polite con conversation, you don't bring up religion, sex, and politics. The only thing that isn't brought up these days is religion. Huh? Sex and politics seem to be fair game, but we're still keeping religion to ourselves. And guess what? That keeps us from finding out what other people believe. Not, not to convince them, not to turn them, but just simply to engage in conversation about what do you believe? Who do you believe? Who do you turn to? We don't do that. And then the question comes, and this one is rhetorical. You don't have to answer this one out loud. Who do you say Jesus is? Who is Jesus really to you? And it's important to have an honest answer. And it may be one of those things that I'll need to ponder over. I may, may need to take more time later today to think about who is Jesus to me? Who do I say Jesus is? And how is that reflected in my life? How is it shown? Is it, is it, are they in sync? Do they match? And if not, what's going on for me? There are a lot of other names and titles that we encounter about Jesus in the New Testament. Advocate, someone speaking on our behalf, the author and perfecter of our faith, the bread of life, the Son of God, the bridegroom, the chief cornerstone, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the head of the church, the I am, Emmanuel, King of Kings, Lamb of God, Light of the World, Lord of All, Mediator, Prophet, Rock, Son of Man, Son of the Most High, the Door, the Way, the Truth, the Life, the Word, the True Vine, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And there are more. We may connect more with our Jesus in one of those than we may Messiah. Maybe one of those names 
better says who Jesus is to you and, and how you relate and how it causes you to respond. Or maybe you think of him and your relationship in a different way. But in today's gospel, the title and the topic is Messiah, also translated as Christ or Anointed One. Some people are shocked to find out Christ isn't Jesus' last name. And that's partly because we put Christ at the end rather than the front. Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter has a winning answer. You are the Messiah. Ding, 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 ding. You win. Jesus says, you're right. Now let me tell you what that means. And C. Clifton Black reminds us that at that point, Jesus upends everything that we expect a Messiah to be and everything we expected a Messiah to do for us. First century Jewish messianic hopes were all over the place, but none of them expected a Messiah who would be crucified by elders, chief priests, and scribes. Intertestamental writings dreamt of idealized rulers who would judge the wicked and restore Israel's righteous. None of these messiahs handed their followers a cross to be shouldered en route to their own Golgothas, to be executed by Romans for speaking of their faith. And in no gospel does Jesus say, it is my responsibility to die for you while you applaud my heroism. Instead, Jesus says, the Son of Man is ordained by God to suffer, die, and be raised. And so are his followers. Are you coming? Whoa. Are you coming along? Peter protests, not about the are you coming, but about who Jesus has just said the Messiah is. He actually, in the Greek, tells Jesus to shut up. Just shut up, Jesus. That is not the Messiah. That is not who you are. But then Jesus in turn tells Peter, no, you shut up and get out of my way. This is the kind of Messiah God intends to send. And it is this kind of follower that Jesus intends to call. Pastor Stephen Bowman was Bishop of the Metropolitan New York Synod when 9-11 happened. And he tells about a pastor who was in that synod who also served as a chaplain to the fire department. That pastor saw the first plane hit the first tower and ran to the site. And when he arrived, the firefighters were putting on their gear and the pastor gathered them together and marked the cross on their foreheads with oil and prayed with them. And then the firefighters ran into the building. You know, the people who survived said they could see the crosses shining on the firefighters' foreheads. In that great darkness, the terror, the suffering, the light of Christ appeared to them. This is what following is about. Heading straight forward, following Jesus, risking our egos, our reputations, even our lives to proclaim our hope that we have a Messiah who liberates us, who dies with us, who raises us up to a new life with him in this world and in the next. This is how God works. This is how we are God's hands. In this and in many ways, we are the ones who show that Jesus is alive and active in this world, in our world, today. Not just in an historic sense, but in a real sense. Working through us so that our hands become God's hands, our feet become God's feet, our our words become God's words. If you know who you are, 
And if you know who he is, it's going to be too good of news to keep to yourself. If I'm hesitating, I'm missing one of those two. One of those has to be strengthened. Either I have to know myself, who I am better, or I have to know who Jesus is better, because then it's inevitable. You're going to speak in polite conversation. You're going to shake up, not to convert, but to communicate. So that may all God's people say, Amen. Good morning to everyone, everyone here in person, everyone with us watching online. I want to tell you that those of you who are gathered here in person, you have a clipboard with some paper on it that hopefully you have not done anything with unless you're one of those students, like I said before the service, who wants to rush and get everything done and be the first one done with their work. We're going to walk through this activity together today, but uh, I say this because if you're watching online, uh, you can actually download and print the forms that we are using here in person. It's a, a questionnaire to determine spiritual gifts. We're, we'll talk about what that means. Uh, it's located in the same place that we put our worship bulletins online. So if you go to our website, zion-lutheran.org, you scroll all the way to the bottom of the homepage, you'll see a link that says worship bulletins. And there you'll see a link to the spiritual gift inventory. Even if you can't print it out now, you can actually write down the numbers. This will make sense in a minute. And then transfer them to the form later on when you get a chance to print it out. Those of you here in person, you don't have to worry about that because we did the work for you. The question that we're here to answer today is how has God equipped us to serve? And even to look at that question, I think, is very much a Zion thing because you know uh, if you are a, a person here in worship regularly, if you are around Zion at all, you know that our mission statement is following Jesus, we invite, equip, and serve our neighbor and one another. So that word equip is so important because it's not just the pastor, it's not just the cantor, it's not just the council leadership that makes up the church. It's all of us together. So this isn't about equipping the pastor, the cantor, the council. This is about how has God brought this unique group of people together in this specific place to serve God and to serve each other and our neighbor. I like to think of it like a puzzle. Every puzzle piece is different and without all of the puzzle pieces together, we don't have a complete puzzle. 
The same is true for each and every church, whether it's Zion here in Deerfield Beach, our sister congregations throughout Broward County, we can say the same things. Zion is not Zion without each person gathered here and the gifts that we all bring. Okay, I'm gonna use some names of some people who are here, seated here in person today. I, Kurt, do not have the same gifts as Bob does. Bob does not have the same gifts that Ellen does, okay, and so forth and so on. We might have similarities in our gifts, and that only strengthens us as the body of Christ here in this place. But it's the diversity that really brings us together. So you see on the screen a passage from page one of the paper in front of you. Without all of the members in a community of faith, the body of Christ would be incomplete and the diversity of spiritual gifts would be underrepresented. God needs each of us where we are. So if you think that you are supposed to be somewhere else as people of Zion, God has placed you here. God has placed you here. And those of you who are visiting with us this morning, I see some new faces. We're so excited that you're here to just scratch the surface of this opportunity and uh, willing, uh, more than willing uh, to talk with you afterwards about what all of this means. So if we could go to the next slide. This spiritual gift inventory is sort of like taking a quiz out of a magazine, but it has a little bit more depth to it. Um, and today, all we're going to do are the first two of five steps. So we're going to begin grounded in prayer, because as we talk about spiritual gifts, we're not just talking about talents, necessarily, or abilities, but we're talking about specific ways that the Spirit has given us gifts. Gifts like wisdom and leadership. Gifts like teaching. Gifts like music and other things like that. We're going to answer questions that get to the heart of what those gifts are without naming them at first. Okay, so it's sort of like, again, like a quiz out of a magazine. You don't know what the results mean until you get to the end. And there's a little bit of suspense there, and, and I really like that about this activity. So we're going to begin grounded in prayer. We're going to answer a series of questions, and we're going to do it together. So those of you, again, that think you want to work ahead, we're really going to do this together. We're going to go question by question. Then today, for those of you that are here in person, we're going to collect the forms back from you, and I'm going to do the math for you. I'm going to add it up the way that it needs to be added up. All I'm going to do is take your numbers, do the math, okay, and transfer the numbers where they need to be. Those of you who are doing this online at home, uh, you can either send it in to me, scan it into me, or follow the process and, and do it yourself. As I'm, as I'm sitting here today, I'm thinking I might do a Facebook Live on how to uh, follow this all the way through. But we will find a date or a few dates where after services in uh, October, we can stay after for a few minutes and you can see your results and we can talk about what they mean. But what this is supposed to do for us is to give us a picture of the gifts that are present in this congregation and who might have the same gift. And then for all of us together to do some holy brainstorming, do some sacred imagining, what are some opportunities we can serve? Either opportunities that already exist or opportunities that have yet to be discussed and implement it. Okay, I'm going to ask Pastor to begin grounding us in prayer. You can go to the next slide. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Loving God, we give you thanks that you gather us together, many different members with many different gifts, and functions, and skills. We thank you that you provide us, equip us with so much in order to be able to be active in this world, even more importantly, to be active in your kingdom. So we pray that you guide us in this time, you open our minds, our hearts, as well as our eyes and ears to what you would have us perceive, that we may 
be more fully your presence, not only in this congregation, but in our community, wherever we may be. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. A couple of guidelines, and this for this, if you're in person, you want to use the pens that are in front of you. This is not really a pencil activity, so get, get your hands on one of the pens that, that are in the pews. Okay? There is a space on the front and the back to put your name, both first and last. So I'm going to ask that you do that now. And in the interest of full disclosure, all, the, all that Zion is going to keep from this sheet is that back page. So we'll just copy the back page. We don't need to know what you rated the individual questions. We need to know the, the total numbers. So again, you'll see this as we kind of move along. Once you have your name put on the first and the last pages, open it up. Okay, and put it so that the clipboard part is on the right hand side so that you have something when you're writing down numbers, because it's going to be on a scale from zero to five, that you have something hard, a hard surface to write on. If you are an auditory learner, in other words, you learn by hearing, by listening, feel free to fold it back and just have that answer part on there. I'm going to read each of the questions and you'll have the, the scale up on the screen. So, uh, trying to appeal to, you know, I'm a teacher, I was a teacher for 10 years, so I'm trying to appeal to different styles of learning and make this as easy as possible. Do not overthink the questions. What they are, they are. Whatever number you come up with, write that number down first. Don't read into the questions too much. Okay? They're not asking you to, to, to think for five minutes on each question. We don't have that kind of time this morning. Okay? But we want to make this, again, as easy as possible. And yes, put a number down for every question. Okay, go with go with go with your gut. The spirit is here. The spirit is is nudging us in directions. So let's talk about the most important slide that's here, and that's the scale. Okay, scale from zero to five. The big numbers that we need to pay attention to are zero, three, and five. All of the other ones are nuances, okay? So if I say something and you say, well, that never applies to me, not in a million years, that's not me, I would never do it, it is a zero. Conversely, if I read a statement and you say, man, this is me, 100% every day, all the time, that's a five, okay? The middle of the road statement is the number three. If you say, eh, I'm not sure, okay, it can be a three. Now, if you want to be a little bit uh, more focused in your numbering, you can nuance it, okay? With number one is rarely, number two is occasionally, and number four is frequently. So we're talking about how much you either do what it's saying or how much you feel this reflects you as an individual. Any questions so far? Anything burning? Okay. Let's launch into this, okay, and we're going to go together. I'm going to make the statement and read it out loud. You write your response. And note, okay, that the responses go in descending columns. So you're going to follow 1 through 15 by going down the first column. Then number 16 jumps back up to the second column, okay, just so you don't mess up your numbering. As an aside, I used to do this with confirmation students for many years. And the reason we laid it out like this, and I have to explain this, is we have people that mess this up every year. Okay, so don't feel bad if you do, you just cross it out and we'll, uh, we'll fix it when we have to. Question number one. I would enjoy coordinating or directing a special program or event in my church. Question number two, I like to make things with my hands that can be used in the church. Question number three, I have the gift 
to immediately distinguish good from evil. Question number four. I can tell anyone, anywhere, about Jesus and what he did for my life. Question number five. I often feel I know God's will, even when others are not sure. Number six, I see myself as a person who is very generous when it comes to giving money to the church. And I might add, when it comes to giving money to the church or charitable organizations. Number seven, I don't think twice about doing a job that might not bring me praise. In other words, I don't need the accolades or the thank yous for doing something. Number eight, when I am in a group, I am usually the leader or take the lead if no one else does. Number nine, I believe I could learn a new language and culture in order to minister in another country. Number 10, I am musically inclined and love to sing and or play an instrument. I know there are some zeros in here for that one, just in case, by the way. I also know there are some fives. Number 11, I find great satisfaction in caring for the spiritual needs of friends and people I know. Number 12, I can pray for long periods of time without getting tired, distracted, or bored. Number 13, I could be described as an others-centered person. I worry about, my, I worry about others more than I worry about myself. Number 14, I like to explain biblical truths to people. Number 15, people have told me that I am a wise person. Number 16, I can give others responsibilities for a task or project and help them accomplish it. Number 17, God has gifted me with creativity and the ability to make things with my hands. Number 18, if something is from Satan and not God, I know it right away. Number 19, when I consider people who don't know Jesus, I have extreme sadness and a heavy heart.
Number 20, I find it easy to trust God even when things seem to go bad for me or for others. Twenty-one. It makes me happy to give my money and personal items away. Twenty-two. I love to put on parties, cook, decorate, and make people feel good. Twenty-three, I like to lead, inspire, and motivate others to become involved in God's work. Twenty-four, I feel comfortable when I am around people of a different race, culture, or language. Twenty-five, I would really love to lead people in worship through music. Twenty-six, I would really like to nurture and shape people in their ongoing relationship to Jesus Christ. 27. When I pray, I often see immediate and amazing answers to my prayers. 28. I enjoy meeting the needs of others. 29. I think I have what it takes to, should say teach, to teach a Bible study or lead a small group. 30. And number 30, I believe God has given me the ability to make wise decisions. Two columns done, one more to go. 31, I am able to set goals and plan the most effective way to reach them. 32, when something is broken, I can fix it. 33, I believe I can tell when someone is really a Christian and when someone is faking it. 34. I have led others to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. 35. My belief in God is very strong, and I almost never have doubts about my faith. 36. I am confident that God will take care of me when I give cheerfully and with sacrifice. 37. I don't have to lead. I love to follow and help make things happen from behind the scenes. 38. People seem to look to me for leadership and to make decisions. 
39. I adapt easily to a different change of settings and environments. Forty, I believe God has given me a real gift of music to share with the body of Christ. Number 41, when sitting in church, I am often thinking what I might preach on if I were the pastor. Forty-two, people often tell me that whenever I pray, God always seems to answer my prayers. Forty-three, you'll frequently find me volunteering my time to help with the needs of the church. And I might qualify that one too. You'll frequently find me volunteering my time, period. Could be with the church, could be otherwise. 44, because of my teaching, others have gained a better understanding into who God is. And remember, teaching often happens one-on-one. -on -one. And lastly, I usually see clear solutions to complicated problems. Okay, all you have to do when you've done that is fold this back up and put it back on the clipboard like you found it. And then when you leave worship this morning, either put it in the box uh, that's on the floor right by the entrance table or put it on the table itself and we'll gather it up quickly. I promise nobody's going to walk off with your specific spiritual gift answers. But hopefully this gives you just a, a glimpse of... Uh, what spiritual gifts are about. If you really listened to the questions, which I'm sure that you did, you started to see some common threads in the questions and even patterns, right? This, this is existing because question one relates to question 16, which relates to question 31. All of those, those three questions pertain to a spiritual gift. Okay, the next set of three, every 15 questions, pertain to a spiritual gift. So it'll be interesting to see both for us, the church, and us as individuals, how God is shaping us and what, God, what gifts God is giving us. I've been taking this, as I said, with confirmation students. It's been a tool that I've used for over 10 years. When I first took the spiritual gifts assessment, my results were very different than what they are today, which tells me that the Spirit is always shaping us. The Spirit is always molding us. The Spirit is always working with in us, changing us, adapting us to where we are, to who we are, and to what we should be about. And so I just want to say thank you for your patience with me this morning, with all of us together to participate in this. This is the first step in really bringing us together as a congregation and giving us some direction of where our gifts, where our specific abilities and talents will take us in the next chapters of Zion. So I appreciate all of you, your patience, your understanding, and your willingness this morning. We're going to continue with worship. Thank you, Kurt, for uh, leading us through that. Let us thank him for the work he's doing on this. I invite you to stand as you're able as we continue with the prayers. May children and inheritors of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Revealing God, you have made yourself known through bread and wine, water and word. Continue to nurture your church, that it is a place where your presence is experienced and shared. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, you brought life into being and called it good. 
bring new creation to lands devastated by tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, fires, and other disasters. Restore forests and curb overflowing waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting God, you desire all people to live in peace and safety. Provide for all who are in danger. Strengthen first responders to help meet the complex needs of others. Provide care and compassion as they face trauma themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Transforming God, you announce release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Break chains of discrimination and injustice. Amplify voices that go unheard and inspire us to advocate for those who are overlooked. Lord, in your mercy, healing God. We lift up to you those who need to know your healing touch and steadfast presence, especially those in our community, family and friends who are known to us. All health care workers, John, Liana, Kevin, Dennis, Jeannie, Rick, Lois, Leanne, Michelle, June, Nikki, Mike, and Reyes, Ted, David, Christine, Christian, Tara, John, June, Becky, Michael, Rick, Carmine, Pat, Art, Cliff, Beth, Steve, Annabelle, Pastor Fred, Pat, Allison, Brittany, Jack, Steve, Khadija, Lorraine, Debbie, Todd, Katie, Pete, Carol, Billy, Meg, Adriana, Jan, Lisa, Laura, Alyssa, Jennifer, Chris, all those who are seeking spiritual truth and looking for God in their lives, those who are hospitalized, recovering from surgery or illness, or dealing with ongoing health issues, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, and those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, forming God, you gather this community together, shape our communal life, that in our prayer, praise, and worship, we honor you and encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase our joy in working together. Lord, in your mercy, empowering God, you join us together and scatter us around to make your love, your power, your grace known. We lift up our sister congregations of Armand's Key of Sarasota and Emmanuel of Venice to your care and mission. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace with those around us. may be seated. At this time we consider how generous our God is with all the gifts that God provides, spiritual gifts, physical gifts, material gifts, all of them. And we give thanks and listen for how God guides us to use them to share them with others. Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and on earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation, through Jesus Christ. Amen.
Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection has opened the way to everlasting life. And so with the church on earth, all creation, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Inviting Kurt Schmidt up first. This is our God's Work Our Hands weekend, and our health and wellness fair yesterday was the way that we revealed God's work through our hands. Kurt? I know Robin is going to tell me whether I'm in the shot, so I might as well come straight to the center. Uh, just want to say thank you to all of those who. Uh, Help to make yesterday possible. Yesterday we had a first annual health and wellness fair that was co-sponsored by Zion as the host venue and Deerfield Beach Community Cares, which is a, a grassroots community organizing initiative to help uh, with several areas in the city of Deerfield Beach and beyond. Uh, we had yesterday over 30 vendors 
related to health and wellness. I shouldn't really say, we use the term vendor, but they didn't sell anything. They were there to uh, share information about their organization. Uh, we had the blood mobile here. We had um, so many other, uh, several uh, mental health um, programs and facilities. Uh, we had AA, the AA intergroup here, as well as uh, some uh, recovery centers and facilities. We had our yoga studio just right across the street. They were here uh, to represent with us. And two out of the three major hospital systems, Broward Health was here and Memorial Health. Um, so it really was a community-wide opportunity. There are so many people that volunteered to make this a success. And I left my phone back there with all of your names. So my apologies if I forget anybody. I'm looking around and I'm seeing people here this morning that volunteered yesterday. So Chris, thank you. Michelle, Shane, Morgan, thank you. Uh, of course, my mom, Gail, Robin, um, Alyssa and John, I know you're watching online. Penny, uh, who else? Let's, Debbie, uh, Ellen, and uh, Sue, and Bev, and Jake, and Ben, and gosh don't I wish I had my phone. Nick, Bruce, Drew, and if I missed you, I'm really, really sorry. I also have to thank uh, both Pastor Potter and our mayor in Deerfield Beach, Bill Gans. We began the morning with a ceremony honoring uh, the 20th anniversary of 9-11. The honor guard from Deerfield High was present, so I was especially proud of that since I graduated from there, uh, and really to meet those students. Uh, there are so many opportunities, not only, again, for us as individuals, but opportunities for us to partner as a church. Um, I, I shared my business card, and when I tell you I walked away with a stack of business cards about this thick, I'm not joking. So we have the ability to now connect people who need resources in the area, but also to partner with these resources to do God's work out in the world. So this was a great event. Uh, if you missed it this time, Stay tuned for next year. I promise we're gonna do it probably later on in the year when it's a little cooler. We tried to uh, mitigate COVID concerns, of course, but uh, it, it was really exciting and it gives us a lot of momentum to move forward. So again, thank you to all that, uh, that helped make it happen. Thank you, Kurt. If you're here in present, you will see a connect card in your pew. Uh, if you're new here or not so new, if we don't have your, a way to contact you, whether email or phone or, or name, please fill one out for us. If you have questions or comments or prayer requests, please put those in there. You can complete them by hand and leave it in the offering plate. You can use a QR code that's on there and use it with your smartphone if you'd like to do it that way. Those of you watching online, you can complete it by going on zion-lutheran.org slash visitor. And it's a way for us to help connect with you in helping us connect with the community. So we hope that you will do that. Join us for worship either in person or online next Sunday at 11 o'clock. Again, online you can add those prayers as well. Our recovery groups, AA, uh, is meeting Mondays at 7 p.m. in the Katie Luther Chapel. That's for women. Saturday is Old Timers and Others, and that's at 7 p.m. also in Katie Luther Chapel. And as other groups start to return, we will let you know when they are meeting as well. There's help for Haiti, uh, the devastation from the earthquake, tropical storms, so much of that. There is uh, a flyer available also. Uh, you can donate in person or online. You can drop it off. Uh, it's not only financial uh, things, but uh, if you'd rather give supplies, there's a list of, of what's needed that way. You can drop them off either here at Worship or at Evergreen Academy office during the week. Seriously, I invite you to join us for our study of Acts, Catching Up With The Spirit. Uh, we've had one session. Uh, you can jump right in. You don't have to purchase the book. Uh, bring your Bible along, uh, either on your phone or tablet or, or the old-fashioned way with, you know, pages of paper and that kind of thing. 
The study book, if you do want it, is available through Amazon and other places. The study is Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and that's by Zoom only. And then Thursday evenings at seven, we meet in person in Katie Luther Chapel, but it's also online through Zoom, so you can join that way. Please let friends and neighbors know that we will have Blessing of the Animals on Saturday, October 2nd, 10 to noon in front of Katie Luther Chapel. Face coverings will be required for humans. Uh, the animals don't have to have them. If we have, I have blessed so many different kinds of animals over the course of this. I've blessed hermit crabs, I've blessed turtles, in addition to dogs and cats, and cockatoos, cockatiels, you name it. So uh, please, if you, uh, if you have some furry friends or you know some people who do, or even not so furry friends, bring them along. Special thanks uh, to the readers and greeters who, who are part of our, our worship experience. And if you would like to be one of those, there's opportunities for to, to serve on that. Please check our webpage for that. Altar flowers, if you'd like to give flowers uh, to the glory of God in honor of someone or in celebration or in memory of someone, please contact Kurt Schmidt and he can help set that up for you. Our life verse for this week is Mark chapter 8, verse 29. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? This is a, a verse that we'd like you to ponder over the course of this week, maybe discuss it with other people. And thank you for your generosity to the ministry that we share, whether that's through financial means or helping in volunteer ways, praying for the ministries. There are so many different ways to engage, and we thank all of you who do that. And so please be aware that a lot of what you do touches people not only here, but in our community and beyond the state, beyond our, our nation sometimes. So thank you so much for that. Lastly, after a great deal of personal prayer and consideration, I discerned God's leading and this past Wednesday I informed the Congregation Council that I am resigning as pastor of Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church. Uh, my last day will be Sunday, October 5th. And Connie Schmucker, who's our assistant to the bishop for leadership, has already met with council to ensure that worship leadership and preaching continues smoothly, that pastoral care is provided for, that administrative assistance is available after my departure, and other details are being addressed. And in thinking of those preparing to affirm their baptism, I believe that we can accelerate that and have you ready to be confirmed on Sunday, October 8th, and uh, would like to be able to do that, and so there'll be more information on that. There's more details in the letter that you should receive by mail tomorrow, and it's also gonna be available. I'm gonna ask Kurt to uh, put it in the, the members section so that, that you can access it that way as well. Keep in mind that Jesus is our Messiah, our Good Shepherd, our Emmanuel, and he will not leave us abandoned, but journeys with us through this time. Now I invite you to rise as you're able to receive our Lord's blessing. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.